Hey everyone, my name is Sean Wright, Lead Product Evangelist for Kentico. And in this Experience by Kentico Technical Spotlight, we're going to see how easy it is to keep your c -sharp code up to date with the content and data models you create in Experience by Kentico. Let's jump over to the terminal and review our project. When we create new content types or update existing ones in Experience, the application will make sure that the SQL Server database is automatically updated to match the changes that we've made to those content models. But what the application doesn't do is automatically update our c -sharp classes in our project. And that's because we really want to make sure that the project is always in a compilable state. We don't want to go moving stuff around uh, if you haven't asked us to. So then the question is, how do I get my c -sharp classes to match those changes that I've made uh, so that they match what's in the database? Well, fortunately, there's a command that we can run uh, and provide lots of different options to, to generate all those C-sharp classes for us. So I'm gonna come over here to the terminal and we can see that I'm in a standard Dancing Goat project. So if you create a brand new Dancing Goat uh, sample project, you should be able to run these commands as well. And I'm gonna copy in here one of the commands. And we can see here, there's a few parts to it. There's a couple different options that we can supply to customize how the command runs. But the command at its core is .NET run and then dash dash kxp dash code gen. And this command will generate files in our project that match the content models that are in the experience database. You can see here I've provided a couple options. The first one is type. So I'm specifying what type of classes I would like to generate because there's a couple different options here. Um, right now I'm gonna focus on content types. Here the option is, uh, is named page types, but it represents the content types that you would create in the content types application and experience. You can specify a location and this uh, option can be given kind of like a, a template string so that you could generate all the classes in the models folder here but have a subfolder created unique for each different content type that's being created. And then you can also specify the namespace for all of these classes that are created. And again, there's a, there's a dynamic part of this option that you can specify so that, um, you know, if you have a class namespace for all of your content types, it'll make sure that gets inserted here. So in our case, that's going to be dancing goat core. I don't have to specify that. Uh, the, the dynamic part of the command will take care of that for me. And at the end, I hear I have skip confirmation so that I don't get prompted when uh, the, the command is about to overwrite my files. So I'll go ahead and run this. We can see that it generated a bunch of files for me. And I can look at the git diff to see which files were generated. We can see there was a folder content type that was not in the project. There was the root content type for the, the root of the content tree that was not in the project. And then there was also this navigation item that apparently was not in the project, but we seem to have a problem with it. So I'm gonna jump back over to my models folder, to navigation item, and we have a red squiggly because c -sharp's having some problem understanding what's going on here. It says there's ambiguity. So what is the problem? Well, if we look right above, there's a navigation folder and it also has a navigation item .generated.cs class. And if we look at that and scroll up, there's a bunch of errors in here and it looks like it's exactly the same file. So what happened was a bunch of these content types followed a convention uh, to put themselves in a folder with their name, but this navigation item content type was in a navigation folder, not a navigation item content uh, or a navigation item folder. So when I generated my code, uh, experience didn't see a place for this. It created a new folder and created a new C sharp class that happened to conflict with one that was already there. So how do I deal with this? Let's say I wanted to keep this navigation folder and put multiple content types in there that were all related to navigation. And I didn't want to have a separate folder for each one. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo all these changes and I'm going to try this again. And I'm going to, we're gonna see that there's additional options we can provide to the command that gives us uh, additional flexibility. So I'm gonna paste this in here and we can see same command .NET run KXP code gen. I'm specifying page types, so I'm gonna be generating content type classes. Uh, however, 
one change here is I'm excluding the Dancing Goat core navigation item. So all of my other content types follow this convention where they go in a folder under models based on their name. And then when I run this, we're gonna see only two of the content types that I had last time are gonna be generated, the folder and the root, but the navigation item was not because I explicitly excluded that from being created when I ran this command. But now I do wanna get that navigation item uh, class updated in my project. So how would I do that? Well, we'll specify a different option this time. And this option is going to be include. So I can include that Dancing Goat Core navigation item content type so that only it will be generated with this command run. And I've changed the location. So instead of it being uh, dynamically populated by the content type name, I'm explicitly setting navigation. So when I run this one, we can see, okay, my class uh, file was updated and there's nothing in the navigation item folder. This was from the previous run of the command, but my navigation item class here was updated. And if we look at the diff, we can see that oh, actually only two lines were changed. Uh, there were some namespace updates with the generated um, classes that are referenced in this. Uh, nothing else was changed. So that's perfect. The, the right file was updated in the right location, and I got the most recent changes for how the um, experience code generation works. So content types aren't the only type of class that we can generate using this command. I'm going to jump back here to the admin, and I'm going to go over to development, modules, and we can see here that I've pre-populated a custom module named integrations. And this custom module has one class integration event. We can see here's the class name dancing goat core integration event. If I open this up, we can see that it has some database columns, some fields, and I've also populated the code generation options for this class. And uh, these code generation options are persisted in the database so that you can share them with your team if you're using Experience's uh, CI capabilities. So you don't have to worry about uh, someone else on your team having slightly different code generation options than you use. So let's take a look at the command that will let me generate a C Sharp class for this custom module type. So I'm gonna paste this command into the terminal. We'll take a look at it. So the main thing that I've changed here is the type option. I've specified classes instead of page types. But I've also changed the location. I'm putting this in a subfolder under models named data. And I'm going to, again, have it dynamically create a folder for me based on the name of this class. And then namespace is also a little different. Um, I'm using the data class namespace of this type and then appending data to it. So let's run this and see what we end up with. Okay, it generated one type for me, the integration event. And we can see here it shows up in Git. And I'm gonna jump over to where this is in the file system. And we can see that it ended up under the models folder, data, and the integration event because that matched the name uh, that I specified for the location parameter. And if I open one of these up, we can see that the namespace is dancing goat core. So that matches up with my data class namespace. And then data was appended to the end of it. Now, the ones you're going to use most common or the types of classes that you're going to generate most often are going to be content types and custom module types, data types like this one. But we also have the ability to generate classes for forms. So I'm going to clear this out. We're going to take a look at that command. So I paste this in and we can see for the type option, I've specified forms and I've also updated the location to place those in a forms folder underneath the models folder. And similarly, I've specified a custom namespace that includes forms at the end. So if I run this command, we can see three classes were generated or classes were generated for three different forms. And if I look under the forms folder, we can see there's a folder for each form and a generated class for each form. And you might be wondering, when would you want to use this? Well, 
The most common use case is going to be when you want to programmatically handle the submission of a form or taking submissions of a form and doing something with them programmatically. So for example, if you wanted to send a custom email each time that a form is submitted, you could hook into uh, an event of that form submission and check and see if that submission is one of these types of forms. And if it is, you get access to those strongly typed form fields in your C-sharp code, which is great. Um, you could also use this if you were integrating uh, form submissions or that form data and sending it off to an external CRM system or something like that. You could be guaranteed that the C-sharp classes you're using to access that data are strongly typed and match the, uh, the, the form definition that's in the application. So at this point, you're looking at all these different commands that we've used to generate these classes, and you're wondering, how do I keep track of all these? There's a bunch of different options. Well, fortunately, we do have documentation about these commands. So if you go to the experience docs, that's docs.experience.io forward slash XP, and you open up the menu, and underneath developers and admins, there's an API section, and under there, we have generate code files for system objects. And this page has a very detailed explanation of how the code generation works, the different types of uh, things that you can generate classes for, and then all the options for all the commands. So you can read through this and use this command to really tailor how code generation works for your project to fit the way that your team likes to organize files or name things. But still, there's a lot of different options here that we've been working with, and you probably don't want to type in these commands every single time. Maybe when you're exploring different options, it makes sense. But when you are working on a project uh, and regularly updating classes, having to type these in over and over can kind of be a pain. So one option that I've seen to resolving this issue is creating a script to automate these uh, command executions for us. And you can see here, I've already created a scripts folder and I have an export types PowerShell script here. I'm gonna open this up. We can see that this PowerShell script takes one parameter, which is uh, potentially three different options, classes, content types, or forms. And what it's gonna do is it's going to run that .NET CLI command to generate the C-sharp classes based on which option I provide to the PowerShell script. And I could have as many combinations of these as I want in here and I could include and exclude for different types of classes and make sure that, uh, you know, if needed, four or five of these commands were executed for a specific option and files ended up exactly where I wanted them to go. So let's take a look at how we would run this. So if I run scripts export types.ps1 and pass in an option and run this, then we can see that it runs the command that I specified. So this can be a great way to make it easier to generate these classes for your team once you've established the conventions that you want to use. Thanks for watching. Stay subscribed so you can keep learning the skills you need to build amazing digital experiences with Experience by Kentico. And stay tuned for the next Experience by Kentico Technical Spotlight. Bye. <laughs>